come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Podcast Addict, wherever great podcasts are found, we're there. And thank you for joining us tonight on YouTube during the simulcast. There's the camera right up there. It's like, ha <laughs> Hey, what's up? (laughs) Uh, Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's right. Wherever you found us, like, subscribe, give us a star review, a thumbs up, or a rating. Hey, if you give us a review on one of those services like iTunes, we'll read your comment on the air. We'll also read your comment if you write to us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show for the time of your life. You're listening to the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And we're looking at Sean's empty seat again. That's right. God what's, damn what's it, going Sean. on here? You mm-hmm. son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. The Saturday Night Freak Show part time. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Colin throwing shade over there. <laughs> he's not going to listen to this. No. We'll find out next week. He only week. listens if he's on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by. Holly. Mm, me. What did we watch tonight, Holly? We watched a movie called Frankenhooker. Frankenhooker from the year 1990 and directed by Frank Henenlotter, who we would know from Basket Case, Basket Case 2, Basket Case 3, or Brain Damage is probably the most well-known movies he's done. I know. It's like, yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, I pre-gamed for this one, so I wa- I had seen Basket Case before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched Brain Damage last night. Okay. So I'm all Frank Henenlotter'd up because yeah, like, I don't know, <laughs> do you need to see Basket Case 2 and 3? No. Have you seen him? No. <laughs> oh. Have you seen Basket Case? I have. Okay. Yeah. Basket Case? No, I've never seen it actually. Good grief. Yeah. I've you know never that movie is in the Museum of Modern Art? Really? Is it really? I it went is. I went to the Museum of Modern Art and I don't remember seeing anything about that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Basket case. Interesting. Well, Hen and Lauder's got a. Uh, Can I tell my one thing? I one thing about Basket Case. Yeah. So I've never seen this movie, but right. Uh, I was traveling for work once, and we had a we our schedule got pushed back, so we spent a day in Queensbury, New York, which is a really really small upstate town where like things roll up and shutter up at like six o'clock at night, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I am. We, I don't have a car. I have my work like stipend money yeah uh all my coworkers i travel with are going off doing their own thing and i'm like what am i gonna do in this town for a whole day it's raining so it's terrible yeah so i go and we could i go i'm googling this town to see what there is to do everything that comes up saying that this is the town where they film basket case <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like okay but what can i do <laughs> like, that was great i'm yeah, so happy I'm like, for you awesome. do you have any theaters it's a horror movie i haven't seen so cool <laughs> <laughs> wow which is weird because in my memory of basket case like so much of it takes place in new york city yeah so there must have they been they were very far away sets yeah. you know well, like where, the, i think it was the, the houses house. the houses were yeah but they live in an apartment like the whole movie takes place in a new york city apartment no much. it's in a house he's in the garage at his house no basket case oh god damn it. i'm thinking about this movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basket case, yeah. yeah 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 so in- maybe it was interiors yeah. and stuff were shot there. maybe yeah, yeah maybe, they may have built maybe. The, uh, that's that town's claim to fame guys yeah wow wow <laughs> it was a really boring place to be <laughs> did you end up I'm, finding anything to do i uh i took an uber to the movie theater mm-hmm. to find out that the movie theater is closed permanently <laughs> what's and this what, queensbury queensbury and then i and then i gave up and just went back home and drank in the hotel bar and then went to oh, bed oh, and oh, write oh, a book oh, and went to bed oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well you should have came home and watched basket case i mean I that's the yeah uh, Hen and Lauder is a uh, see. Okay, so here's a question that I need to find out: Is there, or should we make? Is there enough? There's a breed of uh, New York filmmakers, mm-hmm. right? And New York filmmakers, the East Coast. Maybe we should just say East Coast. Okay. No, I mean, specifically like New York. It feels like. Okay. Is that like a genre? The New York horror film. Like, can we make that a genre? Is it sure. Thing? But what would be the? I was like, what do you want to throw in there? 
Um, well, pretty much anything by Trauma. Okay. Yeah. Like Lloyd Kaufman movies. They have a museum. Don't they? Troma has a museum what? in New York. Yeah. Do they? Well, yeah. that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, museum. I use that word loosely. I don't really know what it is. I haven't been there, yeah. but I've heard about the Troma Museum. Hmm. It's that, a thing. Yeah. Wow. I mean. I mean, what well, else I they could do with all the junk they had in their movies? You know. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> but I mean, like the specifically, like you know, you seen any Larry Cohen movies? Yes. Larry Cohen did, uh, yeah, Maniac Cop yep. we did on this yeah, show, yeah, yeah. Uh, Maniac Cop 2, uh, mm-hmm. yet to uh, be featured on the Freak Show. I'm sure Sean will I'm bring probably, it. I'm yeah. sure Sean will get to it. Yeah. <laughs> sure it's on his list. Did you know that Maniac Cop is our most listened to episode ever? Is it really? What? Is it re- Yeah, but I think I most of them, most of the listeners all came from one place. It's the weirdest fucking thing. Like, it outpaces Explain yourselves. everything else that we have ever done by thousands. Can you see the place that it is? Yeah. Have you researched? This is like Aurora, Illinois or something you, like that. Or- did you look to see if Maniac Cop has any ties to Aurora? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's it a was suburb of Chicago. Bizarre. Well, yeah, thing. that's true. It's a suburb of Chicago and <laughs> yeah. he's from Chicago, so and that makes Cohen's sense. from Chicago? No, no, no. Um, uh, Fucking um, uh, Robert Zar. Zar, yeah. He's oh, from Chicago. Okay. Oh, Not, maybe he. So he was recommending the, our episode to all of his Zidara friends. Zadar Estate. He's I'm, dead. Isn't yeah. he named, I'm didn't saying he it's probably his entire family. That's yeah, what I'm saying. <laughs> well, if you listen to our Maniac Cop episode, then uh, thank you uh, for making it our number one episode. I'm baffled by ever. that. It is. Yeah, I'm baffled too. Yeah, because yeah. I, I don't think I like that movie. So no, sorry, I, I, sorry I, if I hurt your feelings. No, I didn't recommend that movie. Yeah. I didn't like I it. I didn't think I did he was not. enough of a maniac. <laughs> yeah. And like, I have fond memories of it now that when I think back on it, but I'm not sure if I did. I think, I think your fond memories of a, of us recording the episode, not so much the movie. <laughs> I think it was, we had a you good know, time talking about it. They're remaking Maniac Cop. I've heard that. Well, we heard originally it was Nicholas Winding Refn had mm-hmm. bought rights to do it. Which then it sounds was like, awesome. <laughs> I watched that movie. I think it is actually going forward. You no, know, he's not directing it. I don't think no. he's producing it in some capacity. <laughs> well, I, I need him to get back to making weird movies again. Yeah. He's got like a seven part TV series. For I don't want Amazon. that. No, I want him to be <laughs> limited. <laughs> limited. Too old to die young or something. Don't like that. Don't give him too to... much. Bring yeah. him back, but don't give him too much. No, he needs to be like put on a schedule. Yes. You need to be like, no, you need to produce a movie, not yes. a TV show, because then it's just going to go off the rails. You need yeah. a movie. Yeah. Like bring him back, but babysit him. You know? <laughs> yeah. The drive guy is never coming back. Okay? I know. I know. It was a fluke. But thank God I love Only God Forgives, and so I'm going to keep getting more of that for the there rest of my mm-hmm. life. Um, but yeah, New York filmmakers, uh, of this genre, you know, Lloyd Kaufman, uh, Larry Cohen, um, uh, William Lustig, uh, Larry Fessenden. I mean, he's like on the lower, you know, but uh, less well known, but I mean, they're these guys who are regional filmmakers who never went Hollywood really. I mean, they all make these really extremely quirky Mm -hmm. New York horror films and i'm like if you were trying to make a genre out of it like what are the defining characteristics of you know that these movies all share that w- that you can say is like that's a i mean i know there's there's the east coast slasher films which obviously friday the 13th you know is one of and like the burning you maniac? know maniac like, well mania obviously yeah it's mm-hmm. a william lustig mm-hmm. movie yeah um but they have a they have there's a certain feel to a new york Film gross. <laughs> <laughs> the, city was, the, the city was even dirtier back then than it yeah. is, you know. It yeah, was, it, like I've seen New York and I've seen how gross it is. It's yeah. hard for me to imagine it be like this is the clean version. Like this, right? is, like it now is better. Yeah. Like this is better. Yeah, it smells like urine. It's grimy. It's disgusting. But it was worse. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Well, Basket Case is famously like one. I think one of the few surviving movies that actually shows um because i think there's a scene where uh the the main character walks down uh 42nd street and there's all the porno houses in the grindhouse movie theaters, yeah. mm-hmm. like you know that those have all been mm-hmm. uh i don't remember, they weren't demolished i think they were remodeled or whatever so now they're like disney theaters and shit <laughs> like that or whatever <clears throat> but they're not the sleaze pit that that place was in the uh, yeah. 60s, 70s, and 80s. Was okay the the like cold open and the howling is that in New York when she goes to that porno uh, theater? Is that okay? Mm. Yeah, 
But yeah, I mean, they had their yeah. strip there too. Because right. if you mm-hmm. look at a movie like uh, Hardcore mm-hmm. or uh, Eight Millimeter, mm-hmm. uh, they do mm-hmm. that. Too. Yeah. Uh, there's a, uh, they're always saying, oh, street trash. Street trash. Are you here for street? Yeah, I was okay, here for so street trash. When yeah. I was watching this movie tonight, Frankenhooker, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of street trash uh, throwback. Yeah. You know, like uh, it, it felt similar. Yeah. But it does, it shares, you know, with I suppose like Toxic Avenger, you know, or something yeah. like that. There's an irreverence, there's a humor to most New York uh, horror films. Mm hmm. Of course, now I'm thinking of Maniac because you mentioned mm-hmm. it. I'm like, well, that movie's not funny at all. No, but, it's uh, kind of unintentionally funny sometimes. Yeah, but not <laughs> like it doesn't have a sense of humor. About no, it's itself, dark you know as I mean? fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that always seems to be the thing, too. It's like New Yorkers have uh, a like that when they when they go for it, they go all the way mm-hmm. uh, and into areas that, you know, some other parts of the country find extremely taboo, I would say. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this is true of Hen and Lauder's stuff uh, mm-hmm. also. Um, brain damage is a like weird. I mean, uh, okay, well, I will talk about that in, in some other parts here tonight. But um, okay, so Frank and Hooker. Yes. Um, I know this was so his filmography was he made uh, he made Basket Case in like 82. Mm hmm. He didn't do anything, as far as I know, until um, Brain Damage in 88, Mm -hmm. and then Frankenhooker in 90. Yeah. And then I think in the 90s, he did the other two. He did the other two, Basket Case, yeah. And then uh, took a hiatus. And during that period of time, actually, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the, uh, the home video label Something Weird. Yeah, weird video. a little bit. They put out a lot of like uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis mm-hmm. video. I mean, like all sort. Like this company came out with a ton of crap, and I think uh, that uh, Hennenlotter was actually the guy who curated a lot of the material that came out on something mm-hmm. weird video. So there's that. That's what he did for most of the nineties and or at least the two thousands and maybe up to, he's making documentaries now or something like that. Mm-hmm. And his films are being rediscovered and uh, celebrated now. Like we said, in the museum of modern art and there, everybody's getting new releases of through arrow video or, mm-hmm. or what have you. Right. All right. So Frank and hooker. Yeah. Holly, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, this <laughs> film? Uh, well, it starts with a brain with an eye. Like this is, it, it was amazing it how fast right we in. got into right this movie, in. and we're like, "Wow, that's okay." You know, it's like presents, yeah. bam, brain with brain an with eye. an eye, which was a nod to the 1962 film, "The Brain That Wouldn't Die." Uh huh. Uh huh. There's a lot of throwbacks <laughs> to older yeah. films in this movie. There are, yeah, because every kid from this era, which I'm assuming that he grew up probably in the 50s, you know, he's mm-hmm. making movies in I the think 80s. So. Every kid wanted to do their Frankenstein movie. Yeah. Would, wouldn't you, Colin? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, he, like, leans pretty Michaela heavy and I into wrote it. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We've all done it, so. This makes me so happy. Yeah. Everybody still wants to make a Frankenstein movie. It's a, it's a tale as old as time. It's never going to go away. It's it's just going to get reformulated over and over again. Probably, probably for its detriment, but. Yeah. But now they, well, this movie, uh, I mean, there's, there's. There's lifting things from the Frankenstein mythology of the story, but then there, this movie is like clearly uh, in love with the third 1931 Frankenstein movie mm-hmm. because on a lot of its uh, shots, technology, you know, I mean, it, it is a uh, you know the the body on the platform being raised up right, through the the, the classic imagery. Uh, I liked of, that. Yeah. I liked it. I did too. I was into it. I was like, I was more just like, can we get to that? Because it took like, what, 40 minutes takes, to get to that part? It, yeah, it takes like 50 minutes to get to that part. I was yeah. surprised that they held it for a movie yeah. called Frank and Hooker. It takes a long time. For... She doesn't show up until the like last third of the movie, it seems like. Right, yeah. yeah. But is that a good thing or a bad thing when you kind of, I mean, the idea being, you know, we're going to hold it, you're going to expect it, you're going to want it, and then we're finally going to, you know. His research process could have been a lot shorter than it was who's he uh J- jeff, jeff franken <laughs> <laughs> who's jeff franken <laughs> he's our eccentric med student doctor uh, he's is it, he's a med he's a medical school reject okay yeah. so he's a med scientist is what yeah. he is he works for the electric company 
and he was kicked out of med school. <laughs> and he does at home surgeries. <laughs> he staples people's stomachs yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, Apparently, yeah, yeah. that's Who's what you do. He, he lives in Jersey, as they yeah. say, a bunch. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they say it a lot. They like to make sure you know he's from New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is so. This is a New Jersey horror movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Essentially, with, the, yeah. with some travel through the tunnel. Yeah, you yeah. Go, go over to the, the city. bridge and yeah, yeah over the mm-hmm. bridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he says that a few times. Well, I was just some, you know, like the 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 movie sense of humor is like right in that first scene. It's like you get a close up. This guy's working on a brain with an eye in it. Yeah, and then uh, this woman comes in. Then it turns out he's in a kitchen doing yeah. this experiment. And a woman comes in. Can you pass the ketchup? And yeah. then the movie goes outside, and there's like a birthday yeah, party going on. And you're a like a bar- big party. <laughs> Yeah, like what the <laughs> holy hell is happening? And I felt a big warm nostalgia hug from that party. Wow, yeah. wow, nineties barbecue. Yeah, I was like, she, this seems real familiar. When she grabbed that massive two liter of Pepsi. Which, yeah. <laughs> was that like a four liter? That was huge. Yeah, it was, it was big, huge. Yeah. Huge. Even like the dad was wearing those white Nikes that you wear for grilling. Yes. You know, it was like I was like I, I'm feeling this scene right now. Whoa, you whoa, know? whoa, 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 whoa! We're supposed to wear what? You there's gotta like, wear a certain shoe wear footwear when you grill. There is a, I haven't heard got oh, this. No, memo. there's just a whole generation of parents, dads specifically, that like there was this in the nineties, there was a specific type, specific type of Nike that like dads in the nineties wore. Yeah. And so like that's like associated with like the was, grilling. And, yeah, and it was <laughs> It, re, the Reebok version looked very similar. To yeah, it was a white looked, Nike. Yeah, the with chunky. The stripes, yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With like a navy blue emblem. Yeah. My dad had them too, and they'd pull their socks up, yeah, pull their white would, socks up. He would wear yep. them until they were gray. When I was a kid, I thought they were gray shoes. I didn't know that they used to be white. And they get the creases in them, and then and then when they really were dead, the dad would finally mow the lawn in them. They turned green, and that's oh, how yeah. you knew it was over. They became lawn shoes. Yeah, they Absolutely. became lawn shoes oh, after that, wow. and it's. Yeah. I don't know. Dad's grilling in the yes. '90s had a look, you know. They had a look, <laughs> yeah. And that d- that dude had it, and I was like, I am time traveling right now yep. to like you know a birthday party or whatever yeah. when I was a kid. And I, I could was, taste the burger. I was like, <laughs> that cake. Huh? I was like, I know what the frosting tastes like. Yes. on that cake. Looking at it, yeah, it was just kind of delicious. <laughs> amazed by our uh, so Jeffrey's um, fiance <clears throat> Elizabeth. Elizabeth is wearing was, this. Was uh, Elizabeth Shelley. Was it? Yep. Okay. Gross. <laughs> Kudos Stop to it. you, Frank Henneloner, who also wrote this film. He you did. know what I also noticed about his movies? Hmm. Like, all of them, the characters are extremely verbose. Like, there is not a moment, really, where the movie breathes where there isn't somebody talking. Yeah. Like, every mm-hmm. scene is a constant stream of dialogue. Yeah. And Guy's mo- driving in a car, he's talking to himself. Yeah, I was looking at most of the dialogue is our main character talking to himself, mm-hmm. which I'm not going to lie, I kind of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I hard, it. It's yeah. hard to do, and he it's does really, it pretty well. I like, think he's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this guy, I what's his name? I think he's fantastic. His name is James Lawrence. He looked s- sort of familiar, but I think he just has one of those faces. He has a cameo in Street Trash. Oh, does he? Yeah. It's all Which is when you said it reminded you of Street Trash, I was like, was it because you recognized him? <laughs> I wouldn't even. I couldn't even tell you who he was. You know what? I, I think you know he had what a though? Someone had a cameo. I think it was him. All right, listener, I'm going to make Sorry a confession here that at one point during the movie, I had to get up and use the facilities, and so I missed a brief mo- part of the movie. You? I know. I know. I'm sorry, but uh, what Disgusting, I was wondering, Colin, is during mm-hmm. the time that I was gone. Yeah. Was there a cameo from uh, the guy from Basket Case? In this movie, because there was in brain damage, which it was like, what? I was like, holy crap, this guy. So I'm like, is this like a reoccurring thing? He's always with the basket, like in a Frank Hanna-Lotter movie. I think when you stepped out, like she was just in the room with that dude. So it was just the two of them. Yeah, I think. think Well, shit. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a missed opportunity because that would mean if he did three basket case movies and one brain damage movie with the cameo in it. You know, you one. know what the missed opportunity was? That scene when the head flies out the window and lands in the trash can. That should have been landing in the basket. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, what yeah, it should yeah, have yeah, been. Yeah. And yeah. Belial like kicks the thing out. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what it should have been. Yeah, you got to see basket case. It is. It's the. I mean, there's a roughness to. I think like that's another thing that the this uh, New York genre has is there's a roughness to the production where it's like. 
they don't really have a whole lot of money and maybe they're you know they're not uh, completely technically savvy all those people are off on the 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 west coast you know mm-hmm. yeah the slick hollywood productions mm-hmm. it's like you always get the feeling that the the new york guys are roughing it and we yeah. got the money somehow we cobbled it together from some kind of sources they're not studio financed and they're gonna make a movie mm-hmm. and they make these movies that are set out to be like entertaining above anything else yeah and they're just going for the fucking fences as far as like what their content and you know subject matter is yeah <clears throat> in this one uh dear jeffrey's fiance at this opening barbecue <laughs> gets run over by a she does it to herself lawnmower. she runs over yeah. herself with, the with remote the remote control lawnmower how do you yeah. run over yourself she she slaps all the buttons yeah. on his remote she's control like, lawnmower she's while like, she's standing see how in front it works dad let me show you and presses all the buttons on the fucking remote which like hot, potentially hot take i don't think a dad especially in the 90s would like a remote control lawnmower they like mowing the lawn that they live for that shit i don't think they'd like something that takes their one of their pride and joys away from them yeah they put a lot of love and work into their lawn they're not just gonna let some device <laughs> yeah do that for them yeah not exactly the 90s, no. you should have seen but now no, you should have seen my lawn growing up it was immaculate oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 oh dude beautiful. i have seen those uh lawns that are like golf course lawns yeah which i'm still jealous because i don't know how they do it where they have the stripes yeah yeah you know, the i don't know how to do that either stripes. how do you do that it's i've tried like, doing that it doesn't work i know it's like lawn plaid it's yeah yeah, yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. And you how, just sit there going like, man, how? I perfect, don't know. Perfectly trimmed bushes, yeah. flowers. Yeah. It's gorgeous. That's yeah. how my lawn was growing up. It was gorgeous. I, yeah. And I, I can't figure it out with my lawn. And I always feel like my neighbors are judging me because I can't figure it out. Well, I'm like, they, they know I don't know. they don't have They're the plaid judging. stripe thing either, right? A couple people in my neighborhood Dear do. God, do they heaven. really? Yeah. Do they have someone come there's do a, it? Well, there's a, no, there's a guy across the street from me. And like, you know how big the lawns are in my hood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has a riding lawnmower for his tiny ass yard, so that yeah. he takes it very seriously. Apparently, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you don't want to turn it over to the iRobot uh, lawnmower that's coming out. Apparently, yeah, yeah, oh, they that developed. That sounds horrifying. They have that's the a Stephen lawnmower. King story it is. about to happen. Oh, wait, that wasn't remote or control. Or it's it, no, it's um maximum overdrive. Yep, the lawnmower kills yep. that person in that or, movie. Or um, is it just, what's the fucking lawnmower? The happening, killing movie. It's just what the fuck is it called? I don't know what movie that is. Killer lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, it's it's something, yeah, it's yeah, something like yeah. cheap. Yeah, but I don't remember. Blades. Blades. <laughs> <laughs> Blades. That's it. <laughs> we just named a, three movies a, in which people are killed by lawnmowers. Yeah, there is a movie for everything, <laughs> yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Blades. The happening's got a good one. Killer yeah, lawnmower. The happening does have a good mm-hmm. one. Well, she gets uh, this. Uh, this poor woman gets pureed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so thus begins the quest of Jeffrey to resurrect his uh, his long his lost love, uh, you know. And so he has to set about like how to actually go about doing this. Right. And this takes about fifty minutes of screen time, forty five minutes of screen time. Well, for first, him to- it's, first is the credit sequence, seeing him draw. Oh, yeah, I dug all that stuff. I like that. Because <laughs> the, the he's talking the... to himself, and yeah. I'm like, do you write that dialogue? Does the actor know to, like, well, I'm going to need more volts here and more ohms here. I'm going to yeah. have to up the wattage here. But he's being more specific than that. I'm like, yeah. huh. He's like, again, he's like, I'm going to get rid of that blemish right there. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. He's laying out what he's going to do. Yeah. I like the fact that that's how you bring someone back to life. Somehow plant a bunch of electrodes and wires in their uh, bones yeah. and in the muscles. And that's how you bring them back. Because mm-hmm. we all know that works. Obviously. Um, so, yeah, he uh, he lives with his mom. His mom's creepy, right? Yeah. There's like, something. She's creepy. There's something there. There's, I think that's the actress. It's Louise Lasser. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And she was Mary, uh, was it Mary Harmon? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Mary Harmon? Yeah. Uh, there's just something, it's like a cameo bit that she does, but she's like, she thinks she's in like, you know, this is the career comeback movie or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, she's giving it her all. And I she think. Is, and and uh, when they filmed this, she had been really sick. So all of her, obviously you could tell all of her lines are dubbed. She had to do voiceovers. She had one line I thought that was hilarious. Oh, because this is the scene, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. this yeah, yeah. scene has the uh, so you know you gotta imagine this dude's in his uh, it's in his room, 
which is not really a mad scientist library we haven't seen. This is, or, no, this or, is his bedroom, lab. like his crazy. But he's got shit all over the place and technology. And I was like, yeah, is this where he, we're going to do Frankenstein and... in a in a bedroom? Yeah. But I didn't know it was coming later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, there's this moment where they, you know, she's talking to him. It's like, you know, Jeffrey, you know. It's really sad what happened that Elizabeth uh, died. Uh, you're, you know, this girl down at the grocery store keeps asking about you. And, you know, well, you got to come back into society. Yeah. You got to get over it. And there's this push in on him that happens. And I'm like, this is the fucking Oscar moment, right? <laughs> Where the camera slowly pushes in on the guy as he's given the spiel about. He's basically like, I'm losing my mind. Like, I'm I'm not in control of myself anymore. And it goes on for a while. That's oh, yeah. a pretty long monologue. He's extremely insightful yeah, he's, in this. He's self-diagnosing he in like is. a wildly accurate it's, way. It's incredible. It's yeah. And he's just, he's really giving it his all in this scene. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's just like this really great moment of silence between the two of them. And then she's like, do you want me to make you a sandwich? Yeah. And it's the best line. I love that line. It was pretty good. A good laugh right there. Pastrami. Yeah. (laughs) There's some egg salad in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Egg salad. (laughs) Like egg salad on top of the grossness of this movie. I was like, I can't think about egg salad while I'm watching this movie. I love me some egg salad, but this movie's disgusting. I can't think about anything remotely close to eggs right now. Right. It's disgusting in, uh, I mean, it's not like a, it's not a hor- like a really no, bloody movie. It's not like dead alive. It's, it's like or anything. gooey and like the texture of this movie is gross. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, like I said, it's not the extreme of like dead alive, no. but it is there. It's yeah. like the sliminess. Yucky. It's a really it's like yucky. slimy movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it shares with brain damage. Mm-hmm. Brain damage. Yeah, yeah. You know what that movie's about? Mm. There's this guy. He gets, uh, well, there's this parasite, and in this case, in brain damage, it is like uh, some kind of phallic-looking blue thing that lives on his back, and it injects him in the back of his skull with a blue substance into his brain, and it talks to him. Like, it, you know, it's this comedic kind of, hey, what are you doing today? Tonight we're going to go out, and it sings at one point, and yeah, it lives in the sink, I think, like that, and he puts a, yeah, it's the weird... <laughs> <laughs> but it wants Has to brain damage not been on the show? No, we've never done brain damage. No. But I thought like last <laughs> night watching it was like it was it was in like an hour and twenty five minutes. Yeah. It seemed longer than Frankenhooker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. And it all took right. place in like in an apartment, it felt like. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah. it doesn't change scenery much. Yeah. But I like the fact that like Hen and Lauder's uh you know, he and this is what I'm kind of missing from movies now. Mm-hmm. You can tell me if you agree with me on this or mm-hmm. not. But now we seem to have like the low budget movie where it's like, okay, we got a house. All right. And we have, you know, some guy dressed up in pancake makeup or whatever who's the ghost. Mm-hmm. You know, we're in the ghost movie era. Or you have the super high budget movie where it's CGI from wall to wall right. all over the place. Yeah. And in the 80s, it seemed like there was this mid budget movie mm-hmm. that feels like a low budget movie. Like they haven't got any money. They're shooting in somebody's house, but they have money to do these fucking little uh, animatronic puppet. Uh, special effects. Yeah. And I mean, in this movie, it had quite a few of them. Mm-hmm. I thought the effects, for the most part, in this movie were really good. Like, the practical... Like, they didn't always look good, but they still got the point across, if that yeah. makes sense. Like, Yeah, and I don't... And I don't think... I, th- I think it was intentional that they weren't taking the effects seriously. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't about the qu- quality. It was about the impact. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And th- yeah. the number of and mannequin heads this. going through windows in this oh, movie fantastic. was awesome. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Like the, there was so many exploding bodies and it always just looked so fake and wonderful. But like you said, they great. were like, they were like owning it. They yes. weren't trying to be like, yeah, like this is yeah. a real body. They were tr- like kind of like, owning no, the fact you're that about it's... to see like the insides of the mannequin. We're going to put like, a firework up a mannequin <laughs> yeah. and it's going to explode. <laughs> but it just does yeah. so many of them. It's impressive. There's so many. Yeah. <laughs> just you're like, Jesus Christ. Okay, we're just we're going for this and things are exploding and flying all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I loved the like... The f- that that frame jump that happens when it cuts from the actress in like the position mm-hmm. to the mannequin, to the mannequin, like that yeah. and that stutter that happens right before it explodes. I loved that. Oh, I love they kept that in. I was like, yes, yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah, 
I mean, it's it so seriously honest. is like yeah. sparklers or something. They, I mean, things like firecrackers just shoved up a store yeah. mannequin is what it is. Like yeah. they're like, how can we make this explode? Let's just shove some Roman candles in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah but they day. at least po- pose these things, or they were mannequins, and then they did the yeah. head, so they look yeah. like. But even you know some of the uh, some of the 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 fake heads, I thought like looked you know and had articulation to them, where yeah. I was like. Huh. But some it's yeah, not far it's not bad. Some of the poses were like really specific though. That yeah. made me think they had like mannequins made for this. Like the two girls on the bed that were like kind of holding hands or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. the mannequins like were crouched mm-hmm. in that in same manner. Yeah. 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 So that's why I was like, okay, that's not like a really common mannequin you can right, find. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't just like standing store mannequins. Yeah, constantly. I was like, I don't think Macy's is gonna have crouching mannequins. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. Well, we get to the mannequin scene, the the glorious mannequin scene, because uh, Jeffrey, you know, taking it upon himself mm-hmm. to resurrect uh, or try and resurrect uh, Elizabeth, all he has left of her after she's been pureed yeah. as the uh the the tv newscaster told us in this like it's great that newscast is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> that guy also not an actor there's a couple oh, people man. in this movie that are very obviously not actors yeah that uh newscaster one of them the woman or no the, the dude that guy was not an actor what dude the the police chief were that they were talking to? Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. black guy that was yeah. like, uh, she uh got shredded. Like, like she's a jigsaw. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a jigsaw. A jigsaw. Yeah. He had like three lines and parts. couldn't remember them. That's great. <laughs> well, all he's got is a head, an arm, and or a head, a, a hand, and a uh, foot. Yeah, and like a thumb. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. He's keeping the thumb. He's got a thumb. He has dinner with the. Yes. Uh, he brings the head out and yeah. has this big yep. spiel. Oh, yeah. He's like, that, about, he's like, how about Italian today? That, <laughs> that to me felt very. I was getting. Um, Dead Alive vibes, but also Cemetery Man. I was like, oh, God, yes. oh, what are we God. getting into here? Fuck yeah, Cemetery yeah. Man. Yeah, he's gone off his rocker. Mm-hmm. And so he says <laughs> to himself, the only way, you know, basically he has to rebuild her with female parts uh, to fill out the rest of the body before a storm arrives in two days, which is, you That's know, right. it was Frankenstein. Not just any days. storm, Colin. Perfect for you mad scientists, as the weatherman <laughs> says, looking into the camera. <laughs> and that's the great uh, Zachary Lee, the horror host who, uh, I think he was an East Coast horror host. Yeah, I think so. If you know him, John, you'd that's recognize That's not our guy. Yeah. Yeah. We have Svanguli. Here. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so... He decides to go to New York, go across the river, go to New York, and uh, hire a hooker. How does how does he decide this? The drill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I yeah. I kind of blocked, I f- blocked that, that part out of my mind. Apparently, yeah, that I didn't like it. This is a guy who oh. he drills into. He's giving himself. He's doing a self lobotomy with a drill. Was he Yet lobotomizing no himself? Blood? Well, I mean, essentially he was. He's like drilling into parts of his brain to. to yeah, is that there's like what's a you remember uh, phrenology or whatever it was like a it wasn't that there was something I can't remember if there was how that worked but I can't remember if they tapped into pieces of the brain yeah. to relieve pressure something like a yeah. weird thing and so he's got all the he's got a model with all these different areas of the brain marked yeah. out and numbered and he goes in with a drill to for inspiration or to give himself a, you know yeah. a little bit of a zip. Yeah. Like it gives him a higher energy if he drills <laughs> into his brain and it's like, oh, okay, I can see it now. We're going to do this, 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 and this. Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. It's so fucking bizarre. Because this is New York. <laughs> well, and he like takes it out and keeps doing it. Like it's not yeah. just once. He takes it out and does it again, does it again. And I, I was thinking about it because every time he did it, I was like, there's no blood. This is, but I was like, you know what? If there was blood, it would be so much more uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, so much more. I didn't like that. If it, a little piece of the brain came yeah. out, corkscrewed screwed oh, out of the God. thread that of the be uh, screw, so uncomfortable. The drill. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'm glad I could provide you with that visual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so he takes off to the city and then uh, encounters uh, a couple of hookers and their pimp, Zorro. <laughs> a guy who is not an actor. No, but Zorro's awesome. There is someone holding up cue cards and he still can't read them. <laughs> He's just this big muscular dude who uh, holds court in the bathroom of this strip Oh, I joint. dig him as a character oh, for sure. Yeah. But that actor, holy shit. They cast yeah. him because of what he looked like He's and just, nothing yeah. else. He's just having a good time. Yeah. Where are my bitches? Those are my bitches. <laughs> That's his delivery. My bitches are upstairs. They're going to be down in a minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I love that scene when he's talking to the guy at the front desk at the hotel because mm-hmm. he's just like, "How's your day going? I'm waiting for my bitches." <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then we the next time after they go upstairs, then we cut back down to him. Did you guys notice he was sweating through his whole shirt? Almost oh yeah, completely. Yeah. He was yeah. so yeah. sweaty. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, "Oh, so there's no air in this building where they're filming right That's now." That's just what I feel. That adds to the grit and grime of this movie. Central yeah. yeah. like, air is not common in apartments in New York, which is yeah. a reason why I could never live there. Yeah. So. <laughs> right? Yeah. For real. It seems yeah. kind of rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All those people packed in tightly like sardines into all those buildings and no central air. Oh, New York's gross. Yeah, it is. <laughs> We're sorry if you're from... I ap- it's a I'm great sorry. city, but it's too gross for me. Yeah. yeah. We have air. I like to visit and then come back home. Chicago's cleaner and airier. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, but it is. <laughs> and we have central air. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what, what's the Midwest horror movie like? Children of the Corn is probably what most people yeah, assume like, it is. Yeah, but that's still, I mean, like, is there regional Midwest? I mean, the Chicago filmmakers, I'm sure there are, but mm-hmm. I mean, Stuart Gordon or, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sure. I'm What's the John Hughes of horror? I was going to say, we've got John Hughes, yeah. Colin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. what we're we, going That's for. ours. And that's, God damn it. What's John the guy who did uh, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer? He's, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. But I don't think he does a lot. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. That movie's upsetting. Yeah. I always think about, I always pick it up and I'm like, should I watch it again? I'm like, do I want to You have it? Yeah. Oh, wow. And then I'm like, do I want to feel this movie again? No. (laughs) And then I don't watch it again. I don't know why I own it, because I'm probably never going to watch it again. Because it's a horror (laughs) classic. It defined it, you know, started a a thing. I think I mostly own it to let other people borrow it. Yeah. Well, sometimes (laughs) you do that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um. So, well, uh, Jeffrey can't decide. Uh, so he he wants to rent, uh, what, like eight yeah, it's women. Like, it's <laughs> like eight hoes. Yeah, mm-hmm. to go back to a, uh, a hotel with him where there is just a gobsmacking amount of uh, nudity. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I mm-hmm. suppose this is what you're expecting. Yeah. This is an exploitation film. You're going to get your fill of uh, boobs breasts and uh beasts i guess yeah. right to the joe there, bob yeah bids. if there's a f- movie called frankenhooker and i only see one naked woman i'm gonna be like what the hell is this yeah mm-hmm. give me my money back yeah mm-hmm. like, that's not what we wanted you know that for some reason reminds me of the vhs days so frankenhooker uh, yeah. was like a special thing because yeah. the case of the this is slip yep. cover it had a little button had a button and if you pressed it is it want a date? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I think those go for, design. I looked them up today. I was like, how much, I'm like, can you still get those? Because if they're still working, yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, it had to be a battery operated thing. Right. They're like uh, 80 bucks on up for I each bet one, they do which is work. less than yeah. what I thought. Stuff but. from back then. I have I have a little like toy, like I got, it was like a rock star Barbie or something. She came in the boom box. There's a button on it. You press it. I still have that in my basement, and it still works. I've yeah. never changed the battery really? in that thing. Oh, see, it's for it's like twenty five <laughs> years old. That sucks. Cause see, I, I bought one of the NECA uh, NES Jason action figures. Yeah, where like the box looks like the NES game box, and then you open it, and it is supposed to play the music. Yeah. I bought mine new, and it came, and I've never heard the music play what? out of that thing. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Can you replace the battery on that, or I don't think so because it's in the cardboard box. You'd have oh. to like destroy yeah. the box to like. I get think to that's the how the Frankenhooker thing yeah. is. If I remember, it, because I mean, it wasn't very thick. It was just but yeah. it said like press here yeah and that's exactly like that's how box. my nes jason is too yeah yeah interesting yeah so sucks. if you have one of those copies listener it's worth at least 79 dollars tell us about Maybe it tell more. us how you got it and, and send, awesome. us send, us, yeah, send us a picture, picture. Yeah. yeah yeah um so how does uh so jeffrey you know he's like sizing all these women up because yeah, obviously he wants in, to inspecting them and he wants to pick one, right? He wants to, yeah. This is a problem with his plan. He's overthinking this shit way too much. Yes. Dude, just pick one person and be done with it. Well, but it, this is his, the, the love of his life. He wants her to have the perfect body. But, like, she would just want her body back, right? Like, no, and I know, was, I know that's not an wanted, option. She always but... wanted to lose weight. <laughs> yeah, that's he, true. He was trying to give her the dream body that she always wanted. It's true. But I think uh, I think he uh, overthinks it still. Oh, he's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's talking to her head mm-hmm. at the table yeah. while eating mm-hmm. Italian yeah. food. He pours the guy's wine clean. in her face. You know, his, intention, <laughs> his intentions are good, but his uh, <laughs> method is not great. This is true. 
This is very true. Yeah, he's very whacked. But he's not covering he, his tracks very well either. How no. does he intend to? Uh, I mean, like obviously, you can't you know you're going to need uh, dead people in order to put your the head of your girlfriend on that body. Uh, what's his his plan here? How's he going to? He's not a killer, is he? No, crack is a yeah. killer, Colin. That's right. That's crack right. is the real he's, killer. He's not going to kill. They're already dying. They're already being killed by it. He's just speeding up the process. They are selling themselves for crack, literally. So that's right. We're going to track this back. Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you looked any of this up. Like, when was the crack epidemic like uh, reaching peak saturation in the United States? Was it right around this time? I mean, I, I wonder. I feel like it was late 80s after like, yeah, after people just... realized how expensive cocaine was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I this think is 1990. This is 1990. So. so I think it was right about this yeah. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he makes a gallon Ziploc baggie full. Yeah. Of crack, a giant. It's a lot. Yeah. That's that's enough to go to prison for life in this well, he country. Makes oh yeah, super crack. Yeah, super crack. Yeah, these makes you explode rocks. into a firework. <laughs> I love it when he tests it because he has he to make sure that it works. That was great. <laughs> he tests it on like a, a guinea, guinea pig. pig. He literally it, has a guinea pig. Yeah, <laughs> guinea pig inhales the stuff and it explodes. I mean, just when, <laughs> when he's talking to the guinea pig, that's so fucking creepy. He's like, you're sexy. Like if you weren't a guinea pig, I'd get it. <laughs> what are you well, he's saying insane. right now? Yeah. You're insane. Just come back to that, to, uh, I thought he was just like everything. rehearsing his like a dialogue with the hookers. Is what I assumed he was. No, I'm he pretty was, sure like, that's what he was doing. It. it was so fucking yeah. bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. And Jeffrey is a weird cat. He is. What'd you say? He looks like. Uh, I said he he's looked, got a Dahmer look. He when looks he's driving like around. he looks like Andrew McCarthy's serial killer brother. Is what he looks like. Yeah, with a New York accent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um so yeah, so he gets all these women in a room and yeah. then I think he actually was thinking about like uh, backing out yeah, of Yeah, he was plan. starting to he's like what am I doing? What am I doing? And he starts to like back out of his idea and they're and they start asking about money. So he's just like here, take it all and hands him his bag. Well, his bag contains the money and the super crack. Yeah. The oh, and once they and see they the bag. super crack. Oh my god. Because that's the most crack that any of them have ever seen they, ever. They literally start screaming. They were getting tiny, tiny ass bags of crack before right. for like a whole night's work. From yeah. So, Zorro. Yeah, from Zorro. Yeah. And uh this is like the most crack any of them have ever seen ever. Yeah. So I love the montage though, because they turn on the radio. Oh, you're turning on the devil's music. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that part's funny. And they're trying. Yes, because that's them. the problem here, the music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they don't go together. He said something about they don't mix well. And I'm like, he's talking about the music and crack, right? That's what yeah. they go for. And the, all these hookers, these naked hookers are trying to shove uh, these gigantic rocks into their crack pipes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And then they're smoking. I'm like, no, no, they've got him pinned down. It's a horrible thing to be pinned down by like six naked women at a time. And uh, lo and behold, they do in a glorious scene. Oh, it's wonderful. Each one of them explodes. Not all at yeah. once. They all individually <laughs> explode. Individually, because you got to go for it. Go for the gusto. Show yep. each one. Give the people what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, one of them had like what their leg went flying across the room, and it yeah, was like it was a like Sam Raimi scene. It was like scene. a dart. It was like a POV shot of the leg flying across. Yeah. The yeah, was it? They did that again for the head, I think. Yeah. Right, that knocked Zorro yeah. out when he finally yes. broke. What are you doing in here? Boom, <laughs> knocked out. Yeah. Well, there you go. Problem taken care of. Now you have a surplus of body parts. Yeah. So he takes them all home and stuffs them in garbage bags because that's what you do. Mm -hmm. I like the image of, you know, it doesn't actually show this, but it shows him pulling into his driveway with the trunk, like, um, you know, tied open because it's stuffed full of body parts. There's just parts hanging out of the trunk. I like the idea of him (laughs) driving from like Times Square or whatever across Across the the bridge. bridge. Yeah. Yeah. No cops are. Well, no, like, the, this is the dirty yeah. old days in New York, Colin. Yeah, they're yeah. like oh. Giuliani hadn't cleaned shit That's up right. yet. So, yeah. and I like that when he's gathering up the body parts. First of all, he's just scooping them up like they're just made of pillows. They're yeah. just incredibly light. As he's scooping up the body parts and putting them in garbage bags, he's talking to them like, "I'm going to fix this. I'm going to get to Elizabeth first, and then I'm going to get to you guys. I have a bio lumin something like his solution. He's like, you're going to love it. It's going to make your estrogen skin solution. Yeah, yeah. you're going to. Ma- it's going to make your skin great. Like he's just." insane and yeah. it's wonderful it's like a purple thing yeah because yeah. uh, brain damage was all blue blue lights blue fluids this, this is, is all purple, purple. 
Um, it's colorful in that way. Mm-hmm. I like when he gets back to his his lab, how he sorts all the parts into yeah. bins. Like he has a bin of legs, like a bin yeah. of boobs. Like you know, it, I love that he like took the time to sort it all out like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then he puts them all together and creates Franken Hooker. Yeah. Or the bolt of lightning brings her to life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, what's the first thing that she does when he brings her to life? Mm-hmm. She kind of cycles through all the dialogue we've heard in the movie already. Mm-hmm. Like, she, she has accesses every all those old memories. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Want a date? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually thought the continuity with that was really good. Yeah. Like, um, not just like the hooker lines, but the Elizabeth lines and stuff too. Like, yeah. she really. I was like, oh, I didn't expect this movie to like do callbacks at yeah. all. Yeah. So, like with the pretzels. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause all the personalities are all mixed together. I thought that that was actually like her. I was just watching her cause it's mm-hmm. like, then we spend the next, she knocks him out and she goes out mm-hmm. the door and, you know, immediately returns back to it's her prime uh, directive. <laughs> yeah. I got to go back and go hooking. She doesn't, it doesn't read like she knows what she's doing. It's just like a uh, remembered yeah. behavior. Mm-hmm. But this actress, who I guess was a penthouse yeah, model. Patty Mullen. She was a penthouse girl and she was not an actress. Yeah, and she like, only did two movies. Yep. Doom she's, Asylum and this. Right? She's good. I like her. I thought yeah. she did really good. I know. And she can do this thing with her, her lips. That's like, uh, I don't know how a human being does it. But yeah. like one, the bottom lip goes one way, like yeah. it's kind of the rocky, mm-hmm. and the the top lip goes the other way. But you think mm-hmm. you need like strings or something to pull mm-hmm. it? I don't know. Yeah, how do you make one uh, go right? I think it's she does like to a do. good twitch. Yeah it's, like, so yeah, it's like a really good twitch that she. It's does. really yeah, weird. but you're not yeah. making. I know, the other I know. One go. It's yeah, really I don't know weird. how she does it. It's really weird. It's a distinctive yeah. look, and mm-hmm. she's like, you know, and always mm-hmm. doing these twitches, and yeah. then she's just yelling out this dialogue from the hookers that we saw in the scene before they got blown up. And she immediately goes back to her old stomping grounds to find, uh, well, no, Zorro is there mm-hmm. and overhears this because he has all of his girls branded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When they've got his initial on their arm. And so he's recognizing her uh, as being one of his bitches. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And so he's like, what the hell happened? Because all of them died. Mm-hmm. And now this Jeffrey guy had something to do with it because he's always wearing mm-hmm. a smock. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. She also has like super strength kind of. She can just like push anyone out of the way that she needs to through walls and stuff. And she can fuck guys to death. Yep. <laughs> well, you you even kiss her and you're getting shocked to yeah. death even. Yeah. And you, people I explode. think you missed that when you yeah. went out of the room, but yeah. No, I came back right okay. as the guy. Okay. Yeah, she had taken the first John back gotcha. and uh he blew up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then some other guy tried to kiss her, I think, mm-hmm. when she and then he blew up. Yep. And then uh yeah. so it's a very lethal Frankenhooker. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. She's wandering around. Then she went to the, wait, the nightclub. The nightclub. Yeah. That's where Zoro um, found her. Um, she blew up that other. Oh, everybody explodes. Yeah. And the, yeah. Yeah. Because the, the guy's trying to like uh, go down on her under uh, the table. Yeah. And of course, that makes him explode. <laughs> the nightclub that was basically translates to big balls, right? Yeah. It was Grande Huevos. Grande Huevos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grande I didn't Huevos. Catch yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw, yeah. They paint over that neon sign every time anyone walked yeah. in. And I was it like, means, okay, I get it. It means large eggs, but in like slang, it's yeah. big balls. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. There you go. You learn a little bit yeah. of something every day yeah. Yeah. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Don't <laughs> say we didn't do nothing for you. <laughs> Spanish uh, lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciation of the finer things in life. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is a, uh, it, it, well, it brings finally, cause I was sitting there going like, I thought when they had introduced one of the hookers that, you know, she had, there was like a prominent hooker, right? Yeah. That so they got hooker. to know better than chartreuse and the Your angel alpha and, hooker, if you will. Yeah. The alpha <laughs> hooker. <laughs> But they killed her off, and I'm like, okay, so th- this is basically a movie with like one character because the Frankenhooker is not saying any, displaying any kind of personality of her own. Right. But I'm like, oh, they're bringing in Zorro, so Zorro's the bad guy, and there has to be a showdown between uh, Jeffrey and Zorro. Right. Right over uh, Frankenhooker. It's like, is she going to be Elizabeth or is she going to be the Hooker? Mm-hmm. It's the you know, there's that whole you know, right. it's a mm-hmm. struggle internal with the yeah, I don't know if that's right. true or not. Because <laughs> 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 so you have to have that moment when the monster essentially ha- gains consciousness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That has to happen in a Frankenstein movie, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. Right. She likes pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first, yeah that's the first moment that we see elizabeth coming out a little bit and then jeffrey 
do they they don't show the pro, like what he does. They just show it, or do they? Well, she he, gets. There's like the electrodes. Yeah, she, who's he, doing like the electrodes in her? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. And that she like resets her. I guess she yeah. hasn't had the full like Frank. That was what was missing. I guess. I mean, like it's it's striking. Like she's a blonde lady in the beginning of this, right? Yeah. And then when she comes back as Frankenhooker, she's got the I don't know what purple you call hair it. and she's all purple. <laughs> yeah, she's purple hair, white face, scars all over yeah. the place. But I like the fact that the lightning hits her, and when she comes down, she's got a purple bra. She's got the uh, the purse and yeah. the fishnet stockings. Mm-hmm. Like that was part of the package. Right, she got know, a new outfit. And the yeah, lightning the big clunky platform shoes. Yeah, the, the Frankenstein. The Frankenstein boots. shoes. And uh, so. She gets her head knocked off in the uh, club scene, so yeah. Jeffrey has to take her home to repair her. Right. And that's when I think they give her the bolts on the neck and the big staples, mm-hmm. you know. And when she uh, gets zapped this time, uh, she comes back and is like Elizabeth, like right off the bat. Right. But as yeah. uh, yep. so that was like, oh, she knows who she is. And then there's that whole the horror at the body, like, this isn't my body, you know. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey's like, no, no, it's fine. Like, let me explain. Mm-hmm. And I then love you. I'm Zorro love you comes forever. in, right? Yeah. yeah then then Zorro, who has followed him there in a cab, comes in, and I'm like, he picks up a machete because I mean, every because that's just laying around. Yeah, has a machete. Yeah, lying around. If you don't, you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. You never know when you'll need it, Colin. I mean, you know, oh, I have a machete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, obviously. yeah, and you don't know what mad science. Yeah, sitting on the table right now. We never know like, when we're going to need it. Yeah. You know, exactly. It's right the, there the next to the, the fucking harpoon. The freak show yeah. machete. It's just, yeah. it's always here. Because some one of them fish could jump out of that lake out back. Okay, so, uh, but anyway, Zorro chops fucking dude's head off. <laughs> Who saw that coming? I. I was I was kind of wondering why she didn't she saw him coming and saw it was going to happen why didn't she stop it from happening she was facing Zoro the whole time yeah she's literally watching it happen. yeah yeah what the fuck yeah why so did she just come back from the dead but she had her full Elizabeth consciousness yeah this doesn't totally make any aware. fucking sense at all no it doesn't. Well, because it works out better this way. If dude gets his head chopped I feel like they didn't have an ending for the movie, so they made this up and tacked it on to be the ending. Probably. Now I'm forgetting. How did she kill Zor- How do we... Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This oh, is yeah. a whole thing. It is a whole thing. It's a whole thing. <laughs> Tell us about it. Because then this is when the movie this is gets yeah, got crazy. Gross. So, first of all, we should say that when he puts Elizabeth together with the various body parts. He puts the spare body parts in his deep freeze mm-hmm. that has the estrogen solution. Mm-hmm. So he locks he locks him up in the deep freeze. He's like, I'll get to you later. I'll fix it. I'll fix it all. So he locks it in his deep freeze in, the, in his solution. Um, so after Zora comes in and chops the head off, um, he... Oh, it, oh the, when, he, when Jeffrey does the electrodes on Elizabeth, the elect the electrodes also go to the deep freeze. Mm -hmm. So those are also reanimated in the process, the parts in the deep freeze. And they're left there for how how long is she? Is it, is this one night? Uh, This is one night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh So in this process of the, of them being electrocuted, they kind of like morph together. They like congealed (laughs) into like the sentient (laughs) creatures. Yeah. Like they have sentience yeah. because they reach for the crack. Pipe. Yeah, they still want crack because they're still it's still yeah. hooker parts. Yeah, yeah. But they there's attack. a pile of boobs that has an arm sticking out of it that reaches for crack. <laughs> and that, there's, there's like, like a thing that happens in this movie. In it. There's a torso where instead of a vagina, it's a mouth. Yeah, <laughs> but this is see, this is what I'm it, saying. But it's the, all purple goo covering all. And it's so veiny. gross. It's a lot so of gross. like it's yeah. so nasty. It is. It's kind of gross. It's like uh, I mean, it's, this is that great era of if you've seen like a movie like uh, what is it, society i think it's the other like really slimy uh you know transmogrification or what do you call it when you blend a couple things together yeah and there's that there's no seams but it's like we're putting hands and faces and you know a tower of boobs all together uh you know and they're all mixed together and just it's this gross liquid latex uh, creation, kind of like I suppose, like the end of Reanimator, you know, had some kind of is another thing that like this reminded me of. This was, yeah, this totally like oh, they're yeah. in love with Reanimator, yeah, right? Definitely. Like whoever, you know, Frank, what was his name? Lauder. Yeah, he he like that has to be his favorite movie, right? Oh, it has to be. <laughs> I'm sure he really dug it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, you know, 
<laughs> yeah, because it goes that kind of crazy where all hell's breaking loose and all these parts attack this guy right. and drag him back into the uh, into the deep freeze. Yeah. yeah. And then they take the crack to take in there with them. I thought that was a nice. But thing. Oh, that's, that's it. It doesn't come to anything. Mm -hmm. It was just an excuse to have gross practical effects, I guess. Yeah. Well, the bad guy gets his somehow in a big extravagant. There's a machete way. on the table. Chop his fucking head off. But they're just appendages. They can't read. Okay. No, have Frankenhooker chop his goddamn head off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she doesn't do anything. With no, yeah. she she has zero agency ever in this movie. Yeah. 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 She doesn't even try to have agency. She doesn't even care about having agency, it seems well, like. Well, the only thing that she does of her own design <laughs> is the end of the movie. Right. Yeah, which, Why? Uh, because she this can't live is... without Jeffrey. I see. I don't know what I'm supposed to take from that. The way that I read it was because at the you know then then we see Jeffrey like waking up in close up, and then the camera pans back, and it turns out that she has followed his notes and attached his head to one of the hookers' bodies. Right, because she she wanted to bring him back, but only, his solution is only est is estrogen, so he can only bring women back. When he got his head got covered in it when it right. came flying off and hit the floor. So he's now a dude's head on a on a woman's body. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could take from him is like, you know, it's like the irony of, you know, you want to do this to her mm -hmm. and this is gonna be a good thing, but you know, it's like now when you're the victim of your own Yeah, uh, that's I think that's what they were going for. Mm -hmm. You know, he created this monster out of a woman's body, so then she does the same to him. I think that's what they were going mm -hmm. for. Yeah. And yeah. then it's like him screaming and smash cut hard to cut black. yeah so and that's the end of the film mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah i mean you never really get like he never really gets to confront zorro right. who's mm -hmm. never really much it's like it seems like she needs to confront zorro right because that's what i'm saying like why didn't she just kill him as like a way of right. taking back anything you know yeah. like, but i never really got the you know it's like aside from him like going around like yeah they're my bitches mm -hmm. i never really got the fact or the 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 idea that he's a really bad guy. Oh, not actually, he didn't seem like a bad guy. Like the fact that they tried to make him a bad guy in like the third act didn't really make sense because he didn't seem yeah, like a bad guy I mean, in the first act. It's like they, it's like they want us to just assume he's a bad guy because he's a pimp. Like, right. That's the only thing we're given. Like he's a pimp, so clearly he's the villain. Yeah. Obviously, right. but which the, I mean, you know, the, ordinarily could be. But like yeah. he didn't. He seemed to give them a lot of autonomy and a lot of. I don't know. Well, like I didn't really get like a these women. Yeah, right. yeah I was like, he yeah. has, so it's like he's he still, has branded them, and he's, right. he's paying them with crack. Yeah, so he's not so a he's good not guy. A good guy. Yeah. But you know, and again, but that actor is not yeah. portraying not, a bad not guy. Right? No, no, not at <laughs> yeah. all. So maybe that's the the thing that we're missing here. You needed a, somebody who played a heavy. Yeah. Uh, instead of just a big dude who's like, well, yeah. he can beat the little dorky scientist guy up. Right. But he's not really coming off as like this evil motherfucker. Yeah. You Especially like, since the women are still like mm -hmm. going up to him and like, hey, Zorro, you know, it's mm -hmm. like they defer to him in a way that didn't feel subservient. No, not at all. Yeah. It was like, you're our dude, you know, you're our guy. They didn't, like, if they really wanted to, like, send the message more of him being, like, a bad guy, the women should have, like, feared him. Like, mm -hmm. oh, Zoro's gonna find out and you're gonna be fucked. Like, but they didn't do that. No, like, they're in a working relationship yeah. with this guy. Yeah, they have, he a, provides they have a mutual understanding, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's too bad that, like, that, sh that role should be, like, a Michael Clark Duncan or something, you know? Like, really, like, that guy's big, but... That's all he has going for him. He doesn't have any presence, even though he's big. Yeah. He had that awesome mustache, though. Yeah. But <laughs> that he did. <laughs> but <laughs> but he, that's why he's Zorro. Yeah. Because of the fucking But bucket. his line delivery yeah. killed any other. Oh, yeah. You he's know? not an actor. No. Yeah. Not no. an actor. All right. Well, uh, any stray observations about uh, Frank and Hooker before we get to the wrap up portion of our show, which you should um, stick around for because yeah. it's going to be awesome couple things we probably should hit on first of all the uh <laughs> the uh, tagline on the box the video box if you will a terrifying tale of sluts and bolts <laughs> it's pretty That's great That's pretty i think it's pretty fantastic sluts and bolts yeah um 
I don't think it would surprise any of you to find out that Hen and Lauder was in a pitch meeting and completely improvised the story. And then when it was greenlit, he wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like it's like that Family Guy bit about Stephen King it's, pitching the story about yeah, the lamp. Yeah, the haunted lamp. Yeah, the yeah, haunted, that's it's exactly, a haunted uh, lamp. <laughs> yes. That's exactly yes. what yes. happened. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite parts of this is the uh, the quote on the video box, the story behind it. So Bill Murray was working on a, another movie while they were filming this, and he got to be friends with the crew. You'd hang out with them all the time. And um, the distributor actually attempted to get an endorsement from him. And Hennen Lauder was so horrified by that. He was so completely embarrassed. And, you know, he apologized. He's like, this wasn't me. This was all them. And Bill Murray totally understood So on the cover of this video box is a quote from Bill Murray. If you see one movie this year, it should be Frankenhooker. Uh (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Which I love. (laughs) Ringing endorsement for Bill Murray. What was the movie he was working on? Quick Change? Quick Change, yeah. Yeah. Which he directed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good movie. It is a good movie, yeah. 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 Uh, (laughs) Um. How much do you how much do you think the budget was for this movie? I'm gonna go with like fifteen million dollars. I'm gonna go like five million. Two and a half million. <laughs> okay. Right. How, much, right. how much do you think it made? Theatrically? Well, this is three hundred thousand yeah, dollars. This is yeah. one of those movies that does well on video, but yeah. tanks at the box mm-hmm. office. Yeah. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. Two hundred five thousand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I imagine it probably it probably got... never opened wide. You know, no, it no. opens yeah. in New York. Yeah. yeah. Like that's it. it yeah, like yeah. five theaters in New yeah. York somewhere, and you know. But welcome. those are pretty good effects, consi- budget considering. I think. Yeah. yeah. I, but I miss so. those days. I miss those yeah. days of the. Oh, there's no small. Mo- there's no medium movies anymore. No, even there's there no aren't. small or medium movies anymore in America. It's all. Yeah. It's all hundred. Hundred and fifty million dollars. That's like a little bit of a tangent, but like uh Nancy Myers says she can't get movies made anymore because her movies only make like a hundred million or less and like box offices want like a hundred million. million. Yeah. Or her less. movies only make a hundred million or less and um, the last movie she did, The Intern, made like 150 million or something like that, and like or worldwide, you're yeah, like worldwide, mm-hmm. and the they're like, no, we want like billion dollar movies. They mm-hmm. want, mm-hmm. and then they want, yeah. want it to be a franchise that can make more billion dollar movies. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's why so we don't get. A, they're that's making a, gigantic budget television. Oh yeah, episodes. exactly. exactly. Yeah. Plan for the future. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's the business is in a bad state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Movies that I love are going away. That's basically what it's come down. Oh, uh, Colin, you still get your Tom Cruise movies. Mm-hmm. But he can't live forever. <laughs> he, I'm sure he's trying to, Colin. Yeah. I'm sure, no, he thinks he's going to, Colin. <laughs> Zenu is Zenu there is for him. going yeah. to take care of him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, sure he's reached the Zenu level by now, right? Well, he's paid enough. Yes, yeah, he I has. I think so. Yeah. If has. there's anybody, it's Tom Cruise. That's right. He's beating out uh, David, what's his Miscavige. name? Miscavige. Yeah. 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 Why do we know so much about Scientology? Because it's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Also, All right. also, fuck Scientology. Yeah. yeah. Side note. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do, listener, first of all, we're going to take a little uh, hiatus. We're going to read some of your mail. This is, uh, what's the most entertaining part of the show? The mailbag or the wrap-ups? I think the mailbag. Mailbag's for me, pretty exciting. I love mailbag. Okay, well then stick favorite. around for the mailbag and have the bonus of the wrap-up. Uh, <laughs> it's so all exciting. What we're going to do to introduce this, we're going to bring in our mailman, Igor. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's a little gross tonight. He's covered in purple yeah. slime. Gross. Mm-hmm. He's been in the deep freezer. <laughs> that I missed estrogen the multi-colored tank. Colored slime. But like it is. Igor, put the drill down. Put the drill down. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the color scheme of this movie. Like at least it tried something. You yeah. know. Like, yeah. I know there's like Slither. That. Slither was like the last movie, I swear to God, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like practical effects y, slimy, yeah. like yeah. 80s love fest. Oh, I love Slither. All right. Uh, about, uh, okay, so how uh, people can get a hold of us on Facebook? Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. By email? Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Novatu Judoka writes in. Johnny, New Jersey. He says that uh, Frank and Hooker. Is Blood Rage plus Reanimator equals this movie, and I like it. Don't we all just need a sandwich? 
<laughs> I mean, yeah. You I can always what? go for a sandwich. I would love a sandwich right yeah. now. <laughs> you guys know Blood Rage? No, I don't no, know. No, I don't is. know. It's because he's got Louise Lasser, and I think uh, that's why okay. he's saying it. But hey, uh, Johnny, it's uh, you know, it's like that. That's not cranberry sauce. Okay, Sean <laughs> Roger says yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping because there's three <laughs> exclamation marks, and the second yes is in all caps. I'm yeah. so excited. I'm excited. He's excited. Yeah, we're oh. excited. You're excited. Sorry well, for all the tangents this episode. There was a lot of them. <laughs> Hopefully it was entertaining. The Invasion of the Remake podcast. I listen to those guys. That's an awesome podcast. Mm-hmm. Invasion of the Remake. They write in and say a bit of a, this movie's a bit of a surprise. It's pretty good for a hokey B exploitation flick. Yeah. And the VHS had a freaking great cover to <laughs> God. We miss eighties marketing. The gimmicks were so cheesy, but so awesome yes. at the same time. Totally yeah. agree. I, I live for marketing like that. Oh, yeah. I'm always so mad I didn't think of it. That's why I was <laughs> so mad that I didn't think of something stupid like that. Were there other... I'm trying to think of, like, what's another VHS box that talked or played music or something? I'm sure there was one. I, was there? I feel just like it. I had one. Was it just Frank oh, and Hooker? The, no, the Evil Dead. E- Evil Dead had... Um, it was a later release DVD that actually was, like, the rubbery, like... Um, Necronomicon yeah, cover. I have that. It's in yeah. My, yeah. But wasn't there one like that that also talked if you had a button? Like, like oh, it was a rubber maybe, one that had a button. Was there a second one? Maybe. I think so. Well, they There's put been out so many versions Evil of Dead that. And Evil Dead 2, mm-hmm. both with the book of the rubber. Right. Book of the, and it's going to, because it's liquid latex, I know that there's a half life on that. Yeah. yeah. It's just sitting in my. Yep. I should have left the wrapping on it. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Uh, Chris Ryerson writes in. And he's talking about the uh, the VHS. He says it had a button on the front. When you pushed it, Frank and Hooker would ask, want a date? I Sublime, he says. Yeah, it's great. Amazing. Uh, Michelle6175 wanted to know if Frank and Hooker is Robin Sparkles. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she looks like her. She, she got, the like look. Her. got the look. She does look like her. Yep. But and, no, it's not Robin Sparkles. <laughs> okay. That's from uh, How I, How I, I Met Your Mother. Yeah. Uh, Morgan Rankin writes in and says, you're in for a real treat watching Frank and Hooker. Mm-hmm. And Cobra can Kumite art. <laughs> I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but it's got to be. That's a Kumite. Cobra yeah. can Kumite art. Mm-hmm. Says Frankenhooker is an awesome movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exclamation mark. Lots of ex- all the exclamations. Love all the it. Exclamations. Mm-hmm. Love it. Uh, okay. So about uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Mac and Me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, we did. Night. Yeah, we night. did. Dom Creek. Sean still doesn't forgive me. That's why he's not here. <laughs> that was the one. Well, that's what it Dom bro- He said it broke his brain. So, Well, Dom yeah. Cree writes in and Dom. says, I can't believe how broken you guys sound during wrap-ups. <laughs> I think this is actually beyond Terminator 2, to which I say Terminator 2 or Shocking Dark? Yeah. What was he talking about? I think it was Shocking Dark was okay. pretty, we were pretty broken. I think You so. guys were broken. I have someone who's seen that movie multiple times and <laughs> feel nothing, so. Uh, oh. uh, he says, I couldn't find my Il Mio Amico Mac poster, but I did find my giant Nuki poster. I saw that. I can't believe he has that. Who, he, you, Dom, you're the only person in the world that has both of those things. <laughs> is that true? Because Psycho Cinema says Nuki is my childhood. Lardy Revenger says Nuki is a mind melter. What? Super crazy. What? And you B-movie people have Poster seen this? Vault, I believe, posted both the Mac and Me and the Nuki. Those, <laughs> those movies are linked together. Yeah, Nuki is the South African version. Yeah. you got. So I guess it has apartheid in it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in a world of your own. I can't even. I can't even. Uh, well, MF Mad, who is also, I must point out, the keeper of the right, Saturday the Night Freak Show, Wall of yes. Fame, says, uh, and this is my fault, me, Colin, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, he says, uh, I feel I need to defend 1986's Troll. Huh, because okay. I disparaged it on yeah, the Mac you, and Me. Yeah, yeah that's did. right. Yeah. He says, I saw this movie when I was nine and it freaked the hell out of me. I watch it at least every couple of years for nostalgia. And I love this movie. It's directed by John Carl Beekler, who did Friday the 13th, part seven, The New Blood. Yeah, man, you get your troll. It's awesome. Go for it. There you go. Yeah. I can't, I can't never go against someone's childhood memories. <laughs> no. They, I can never argue with that because no, I got my own. You get, know? That, get that nostalgia. Yeah. Hell yeah. Colin's disgusted, but yeah. Go for <laughs> well, it. Well, 
<laughs> you know what? Because I'm trying to remember which one I saw. If it was Troll or Troll Two, which one they go through the magic door and there's like the forest? Okay, whatever. Uh, so now we're gonna come to the second most exciting part of the show, where we're gonna tell you what we all thought of tonight's movie. Colin, what'd you think of Frank and Hooker? That was abrupt and unexpected. Mm. Now you put me on the spot. Oh, it's like you've never done this before. Yeah. <laughs> it's brand new for you. Every week, it's a brand new thing. Um, <laughs> Frank and Hooker, yeah. Uh, so, um, I don't know. I have like this. Okay, so I hate trauma movies, right. and I don't know what it is. And I get it. I wonder if some of it is like there's like this East Coast kind of humor, gore, sleazy factor that like is. Uh, you know, I don't know. My brain can't wrap its head around. But somehow, like, I like it when it's anybody but trauma. It's the weirdest thing. It's just specifically I don't like trauma. So possibly I have a mental block because uh, I think I liked Street Trash. This is you you're going to go back there and go like, no, you fucking no, hate it. No, you liked it. Okay. I like Street Trash. I like the inventive creativity on display in Frank and Hooker. It is a go for broke balls to the wall it's cheap it feels like it's trying to punch above its weight and survive in a you know movie market where it has no business being and it's like no damn it we're gonna make sure that you take uh notice of us by just being uh exploitive on you know every uh facet of you know that we can um like i said i watched uh brain damage you know to complete because i'd seen obviously i've lived with uh, basket case a while um and again i think even that's an acquired taste right it's like yeah, these movies are more polished his later ones even this is more polished than that which is a very cheap movie it's more of a horror movie but it still has a quirkiness and a weirdness and a rubber you know monster which is awesome uh but uh you know brain damage had I was like trying to think like, you know, is there some kind of connective tissue here in the uh, Henlotter uh, oeuvre? I like to use that word. No, it's a good word. Um, but, you know, it was like you had this codependency thing. There was a critique on drugs, I think, at that time because with the brain damage, it's psychedelics. And then now here you have this comment clearly on the, uh, you know, crack epidemic or whatever of the late 1980s or the 1990s. Right. Uh, but I didn't get the codependency thing so much uh, out of this one. So, I mean, it was, it was interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, what I liked about it, I guess, was the skewed, uh, you know, craziness of it. The juxtaposition of something that's gross with this like off kilter humor and it was entertaining the whole way through it, even though, you know, it's like you're sitting there going like, well, when's the the Franken hooker going to show up? And is she going to have a whole lot to do? She has basically the superhero first night, right? Right. Which uh, occurs like at least an hour into the movie. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, now she's Franken hooker. And she gets to go out and do stuff, which is basically fuck guys to death and kiss them <laughs> to they explode and, you know, whatever, disrupt this, uh, the, uh, the club. Um, but I don't know. I would recommend this movie. I think I, I of the three Hen and Lauder films that I've seen, uh, I mean, I think a basket case is my favorite. Probably this one's now going to be my second and then, uh, a brain damage third. And, you know, like I said, I haven't seen the other two, uh, uh, basket case movies, but I do think it was a missed opportunity that Kevin Heinrich or Kevin, whatever the hell his name is, didn't show up in character as Dwayne. In this film. Head in the basket. Would have been great. Mm -hmm. Would have but been But then great. Belial would have eaten it. You just you open the thing, head goes in, and then, and then he has to, like, carry on or whatever. Yeah, it would have been fantastic. Great. Uh, but, yeah, I think Gonzo craziness, uh, splatter, gore, uh, just, yeah, boobs and craziness. Had it all, Colin. Had it all. <laughs> Frankenhooker recommended 100%. Michaela, what'd you think? I don't know if I ever fully acclimated to what this movie was going to be because like it felt a lot shorter than I think I thought it was going to be. It like ended really abruptly. I thought um, it was I, like, I was just like 
Yeah, I was trying to acclimate the whole time. I felt like, but that being said, I appreciate the uh, creative choices it's making and the like. It's un- unapologetic nature for making those choices, and I think that I like that it's someone chasing after their vision. You know, I really can appreciate that. I like the like. I really like like the purple aesthetic of everything mm-hmm. in this movie. I think that's a cool choice, and um, I mean like. I was a little annoyed at how long it took to get to the Frankenhooker part. Yeah. I thought that did not need to be as long as it was. Um, especially because it's just him waffling a lot on his choices. Mm-hmm. Um, and like if if that ended up being a part of his character growth of like he starts off as like this waffling, bumbling idiot and grows more confident through making her, that would have worked. But that the movie's not doing anything like that. Um, but it's it's gross. It's weird. It's 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 singularly unique i've never seen anything like it probably won't ever see anything like it again uh i agree with colin like i i wish more movies like this were being made now and Mm -hmm. i it's like this time is gone unfortunately i i think you gotta see it like it's it's you know what you're getting into with the title it's exactly what you'd think it'd be with the with the title you're not going to be like caught off guard by anything that happens I don't think I think it is honest in its portrayal of itself Mm -hmm. and that's more than I can say for a lot of movies we have watched how many movies have we watched that we were like deceived by you know this movie did not deceive us it delivered on what it said it was going to do Malone yeah (laughs) yeah this movie delivered a hundred percent and I think that like a lot of the effects look really good especially considering the budget and considering this is not like a studio film or anything so Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think it, it should be a proud of a lot of the things it did and you know i'm glad that people love it i'm glad that arrow was releasing it and glad that it's getting art and t-shirts and it's getting its place so yeah uh I, yeah you definitely gotta watch it holly yeah no i um i had already seen this and that's one of the reasons i wanted to bring it to the freak show i was like if there was ever a freak show movie <laughs> i think this is it man <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I love this movie. It's, it's my, I mean, I, I'm the one that brought dead alive. So this sort of thing is kind of my bread and butter. I I love this shit. It's disgusting horror comedy. That's, that's my jam. Um, yeah, I love it. I think the effects are just wonderful. They're cheesy and just like you said, unapologetic. They're, they're wonderful. Um, they're so entertaining. I think this whole movie is entertaining. Um, I think the, the main actor is, doing such a wonderful job. I was I was actually the first time I saw this, I was legitimately surprised at how well he does in this role. He really is just a, a mad scientist and I think it's perfect. Um yeah, I think this movie is so much fun. I think it gives you exactly what you want from a movie called Frankenhooker. Um so if that if if you see that title and it interests you, you should see this movie. Everyone should see this movie. I'm going to quote the uh, sentiments of Bill Murray. If you're going to see one movie this year, you should see Frankenhooker. See Frankenhooker. So that is universal recommends tonight on the freak show. Yeah. I think that like the title now that I'm thinking about it, it's like, it seems like that has, I mean, like that's one of those titles, Frankenhooker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, it's a punchline. You know, yeah. Yeah. There's a song, there's a band called the 69 Eyes that I'm a fan of. They're yep. like a gothic rock band. They did a song called Frankenhooker. Oh, really? They would. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I should play it after this. But yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I don't think it's related to the movie, but, mm-hmm. you know, just the idea that obviously, uh, what's his, a jerky 69 or whatever mm-hmm. the hell yeah. he uh, hurt, you know, mm-hmm. the, the idea of it stuck with him, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's a good yeah. title. Frankenhooker. 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 Good time. And maybe Frank Henlonlotter only has got three good ideas. And then he quit. That's fine. I mean, you know? That's yeah. fine. Because I can appreciate that. You yeah. like make a movie. You're like, I got this one. Yeah. And at least they're original mm-hmm. ideas. You know? Yeah. They're his. Those are the Pen and Lauder trilogy. He had mm-hmm. his goals. He met them. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah, one day I, maybe I, I'll I, venture into the basket I, cases. I, I, you know, I, I kind of got a lot of respect for this dude. He, yeah. He did what he wanted to and he delivered. Like, he did the best he could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Given what he had. You I know? dig it, man. I like it. We yeah. should all be so lucky to have right. you know, a career like him. Yeah. yeah. You know? Because I don't think you can have it now. No. no. I don't think no. you can. Yeah. Not the way that this you guy can't. did. can't. So, uh, that is Frankenhooker. Next week, you're waiting to find out what we're going to be watching. So are we. We have no idea what's going to come out of who's Michaela, mouth. what are we watching next week? Next week, we are going to do a deep dive into The Descent. 
Oh, oh, we're going caving. I I, I love my Spelunking. Neil Marshall movies, guys. I love my Neil Marshall movies. So that's love right. It. So we've done Dog Soldiers, Dog Soldiers. yeah. Which we I think that loved. was it. Yeah, which okay. we all love. All right, but yeah. he does. He he's done some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones we've ever seen. This so. is true. So. so. This is true. Because now he's unfortunately a TV director, yeah. or fortunate. I he's don't know. doing good at TV directing. He directed though. Game of Thrones. I'd yeah, say that's fortunate. That, he did Battle of the that, Bastards. Like, did he do some Hannibals? I think so. And like. He does prestige Bluebeard television, at least, you know? Vikings or something like that. He does prestige television, okay. at least. Battle of the Bastards, Colin. Yeah. <clears throat> I know. He did uh, Blackwater also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The Battle of Blackwater Bay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's uh, next week, The Descent. Mm hmm. On the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark.